In this video, I'm going to compare the Homey Pro and the Habitat. Short version, spoiler alert, if you're starting a brand new home and you don't mind spending a little extra money, the Homey Pro is the way to go as long as you're checking the compatibility before you get started. There's quite a few features that I like there that don't exist in Habitat. That being said, if it's just flat out compatibility and you already have your devices set up, you're probably better off going with the Habitat and it's a lot cheaper of an option. But before we uh, dive into why I decided that way or why I decided to explain it that way, let's just take a look at the two devices and kind of compare how they look. First off, if we're in Homey Pro, this is kind of the generic start screen. If you just click on Home, this is kind of what you get. I do like that it has the current weather conditions based on my location because it's something I can very quickly incorporate with automations on my thermostat. The same screen on Habitat would probably be this or it could arguably be the devices tab. Maybe not so much, more or more probably this screen which lets you access your hub settings. So right out of the gate you can kind of see that the Homey Pro is a lot more impressive to look at than the Habitat. Moving on, if we go to the Devices tab, this is what the devices look like. And I like the summary on the side. It lets you quickly place stuff into different rooms. And you can kind of base occupancy and other features based on that inside of Homey Pro. Devices tab here, you can take and look at all the devices inside of Habitat. Optionally, you can go to the Rooms option here. And this is kind of a little bit more similar to what you see in Homey Pro. This is the Habitat version. Now if we go to the next option inside of Homey Pro, this is where we get the flows and this is where magic happens. If you have no coding experience, this is probably right out of the gate going to be way simpler for you to use because it's just logic based and you can follow flows and it makes it quite easy to make something that looks very daunting if you just take a glance at it. But this is just the thermostat control for my house. This has capabilities that I never set up inside of Habitat just because, as you can see, it gets a little bit complex and it gets a little bit too busy. Writing this in if statements inside of the equivalent, if we go to Habitat, and this is the old setting that I used to have. We're going to enable it just for a second here. And you can see I had two, one for winter and one for summer. But this is kind of what it looks like. And yes, there are some broken actions because I did need to move some devices over to make this function. But to do this all inside of if and uh, then statements or else statements is quite a lot harder to visualize for me. Uh, somebody that's not a coder, I'm just a hack job. Uh, yes, I have built code and stuff in the past, but like I said, I'm a hack job. I won't pretend that I'm a coder at all. Both achieve the same results and I think you can get uh, all the results that you do want out of it. But as you can see, uh, let's go to something that's a little bit more easy to look at. This could very easily be done in a flow as well in Homey Pro. I mean it works as well but it's visually much more uh, aesthetic yes but it's easier for me to conceptualize what I'm trying to achieve when I see it in a flow. The other plus side of this too is if you want to test anything you can test from any point just right click and test from here and it'll take you through nice and slow and click on all the functions and buttons so troubleshooting also becomes a lot easier so definitely I'm gonna give Homey Pro the win on that one for setting up automations. Now as far as device compatibility this is where Habitat uh, beats the pants off of Homey Pro and this is why I said if you already have your devices you're probably better off with Habitat. There is quite a few devices here that I would love to add into Homey Pro and be able to automate here that just are not yet supported. It's just that simple. Before you decide to add anything make sure that it's compatible with Homey Pro if you decide to go that way. So compatibility wise the point definitely goes to a Habitat. One that I'm looking at adding right now, and you can see by the tabs on the top of my computer, is the uh, Tuya Zigbee Garage Door Controller. I would love to add that thing in here because it is also a repeater. So Zigbee kind of works the best if you have all of the same protocol on the same hub. 
Plus, I did want to play with it, and I do want to give the Homie Pro the most honest attempt I can at running it. Uh, moving on into, if we go into Insights, uh, I haven't used this tab at all. It's If you want, you can pull up uh, graphs, make it very visual to kind of see the device and how things are working. That's really nice. That's super quick and easy. I also do like, uh, now I messed this up here. Yeah, there we go. I really do like this. You can have all these system CPU clock, load, percentage, under voltage, everything is run here. Now for future proofing, you can see here over the span of me running this thing, the highest CPU load I managed to utilize on the Homey Pro was 6%. I feel like the hardware is much more robust inside of the Homey Pro and it's probably going to be a little bit more of a long-term device and support it a little bit further, I hope. That's kind of a guess, but it looks like it's got a little bit more horsepower. It also feels the same way when I'm going through and doing anything inside of Homey Pro. It just seems a lot more snappy than anything that I do in Hubitat. Hubitat needs a little bit of time to kind of process. As far as scripting language goes, uh, this one here, if you're into building your own scripts or trying new pieces of software, I'm definitely going to give the point here to a Habitat. Like, uh, you have a developer tools here with apps and driver's code. Now, the Tia Zigbee garage door controller that I mentioned earlier, this also isn't supported either without the third-party driver. So to do that inside of Habitat, you just copy, paste this in here, save it, you go back, and then you can go to Devices, Add It, and just like that, your new device is going to open or it's going to function as soon as you add it and pair it up right away. That's really quick and easy. Homey Pro, I have been trying to do the same function here, and I spent a good chunk of hours yesterday looking into this and I have yet to find a nice way to uh, add my own devices, add my own drivers in here. I really wish they would have a testing tab here or a developer tab where you could do kind of the same thing that you see inside of Hubitat here. So Hubitat is going to get the points when it comes to playing around and being able to just quickly plug and play without having to install anything to make it happen. With Homey Pro, you'll notice to do the same adding device, you kind of go here and you can add the device here based on the apps that are available. Here you do see the Tuya Zigbee as well. You can also go onto the app website and you can search for all the apps here and do the same. and you get the same kind of result here. It ends up being the same app. You do also get the option that you can install it right from the website, which is kind of nice. That makes this a little bit more user friendly. It's very nice that you can do it either from the website or right from the Homey Pro. So that's kind of convenient. Now, speed of operation, uh, the point for that goes to the Homey Pro. I've noticed that the automations that I set up, specifically the one for my nighttime routine, which turns on a couple of fans or turns off a couple of fans and sets the thermostat, I noticed it right away. Uh, this morning, I clicked on the button and it actually felt like the automation was on the exact same switch. With Hubitat, they're quick, but there's a, about a half second or a, something like that delay between the Zigbee devices, whereas the Homey Pro, it feels like it's actually live on the switch. The automation and control and the control for the other switch happened instantaneously. I could not tell that there was any delay at all. So there's something to be said there for uh, processing horsepower. Now, as far as supported protocols, both of them get uh, pretty much the same points. The Habitat is uh, recently going to be adding matter. You can see it's coming up. Oh, it's actually uh, lets me enable it now. So this is kind of new after me looking at this. You have the Z-Wave, you have Zigbee, and you also have Wi-Fi devices. You got one more on the Homey Pro, and that's initially what I started using when I set it up, which is the infrared devices. You can kind of see it glowing in all its glory right behind me there. 
The placement is there for a strategic reason, and that is because uh, the IR devices on my home theater behind, I can now turn them on and I can set them to the right inputs based on what I want to do. I find that extremely handy. I really like that. It uh, kind of takes me back to the Logitech smart remote I used to have, which set all the inputs correctly. My wife absolutely loves it. She hates having 52 remotes sitting on the console or on the table next to us. Yes, we still do need the, the uh, couple of remotes, but I can automate the just the mundane stuff of turn this one on, set it to that input, turn this thing on, set it to that input. So the IR stuff is nice. The downside to this though is, of course the IR blaster needs to be in visual range of whatever devices you wanna control, but I'm thinking probably the most people will do the same thing I'm doing there and put it into your home theater room or wherever your infrared electronics devices are. One point there for the uh, Homey Pro for additional support with the infrared blaster. Now, final thoughts. So there's kind of a, a broad overview on comparison. Uh, what do I feel like so far with these devices? I'm really liking the Homey Pro, but I'm finding right now the support is a little bit limited and there's a couple of things that are irritating me with it. The one thing that I find right now that is kind of irritating is the driver that I've got for my Eco Beyond here. It has a couple of options. You got your heat cool, you can set your thermostat mode, whatever. If I go inside of automations and thermostat control, and I just go to a then, just to take a look at what options are available, this is what I get. A little ripped off here, then if I go to the API and I take a look at some of the examples, I get options here for turning the furnace fan on, for example. Now there's no option here to set the furnace fan or do anything with the furnace fan on Homey Pro, but if I go to the Hubitat device driver, I can set the furnace fan on there. And that is what I am currently still doing. So I can, as you can see here, there's a command available for it, furnace fan to auto. Now that uh, is a little bit irritating because uh, because there's stuff I can do inside of Homey Pro. For example, I can look at the exterior temperature and I can set the temperature inside the house based on what's going on outside, which is beneficial, but I lose the functionality of the fan control, but I can't look at the exterior temperature here inside of Hubitat. So neither has everything that's required or everything that I want to set up. So as far as total options and compatibility, uh, neither get a win here. So neither has everything that I want. Both do provide different options that neither of the other has. The plus side, I guess, is that Homey does use JavaScript, and I feel like JavaScript is a more of a common coding language than Groovy, which is the coding language for Hubtat. So if you do want to dive into it and you are into home automation, you can set up anything that you want. You can run it through JavaScript, and you might be further ahead with the Homey Pro in the long run. I honestly can't say, because that's... Uh, a little bit of speculation but that's how I think it's uh, going to end up playing out. If I was starting my smart home today I would probably be going with the Homey Pro just because I feel like the CPU has way more capability and power than the Hubitat does and I feel like there's a, it's going to be more future-proof but just make sure you do your due diligence and find that the devices that you're looking to buy are supported, and if not, find a different device that has the functionality that you want that is supported. I know it's not clear cut, and uh, that's the best way I know to articulate kind of my thoughts on the two, uh, the Hubitat versus the Homey Pro. I hope that ends up being helpful for people that are looking at buying one. Going forward, I will continue to uh, supply some Homey Pro content and uh, specifically I'm going to try my hand at making a device driver for it and if that does work with uh, if that becomes relatively easy for me to do I will make a tutorial video on how to do so but that would give Homey Pro the clear advantage for me if it becomes easy to build a driver for it because essentially at that point in time I can take any device I want to because it connects to anything and easily go forward. 
I tried that a little bit with Hubitat, but I did find that a little bit too daunting for me to, to attempt that. I've worked a little bit inside of JavaScript, maybe that's why but I just feel like it's an easier coding language. I do kind of feel like it's an easier setup, but this is all speculation until I find out.